show and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and back for another episode. This week I am joined by a special guest. I mentioned her in uh, a previous episode where I talked about just some of the things that I've experienced this year. And so as promised, my realtor, Ms. Takia White is here. So Hi, how are you? Hi, everyone. So thank you for joining and, you know, making sure that when I said something, it actually happened. Um, But before we get, I just want to share a little bit about her. I I shared with you all just how helpful she was to me during the process of me being able to purchase my home. Um, But aside from that, she is a wife, a mom, real cool person, and um, she is a realtor, but uh, I would say just based on my personal experience. Um, like I said, I, I think I mentioned this before, but she has, and I want to say this to you, that you Thank did you. go, I feel like you went a, you've definitely gone above and beyond anything that I expected yeah, in terms of you. Even at the end. a realtor. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and we'll touch on that uh, a little later, but yeah, she's just definitely all yeah. around. Um, so before we get into just how wonderful you are okay. um, and, and what, why you do what you do, okay. I'd like to start every episode with what I call the gratitude moment, right. um, just where I take some time to share something, someone, whatever's mm-hmm. on my mind, just something that I'm grateful for today mm-hmm. or in, 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 in a recent time. So as my guest, I'll have let you go first. Okay, great. Well, I would say that I am grateful for this moment, this present moment, right? Because a lot of people aren't grateful for the present moment. Being present is what it's all about. Um, I'm thankful for you Um, in many, so many ways. Um, I am very thankful for, for you. I feel as though our relationship has definitely blossomed into a friendship. Definitely. And I'm grateful for that. I am grateful for the experience that I had working with you. As at that time, I was fairly newer to real estate. And um, you'll hear, as I guess we'll continue to talk, I'll mention that every transaction is different, right? And through the ups and downs, with that your transaction i am grateful that i'm able to now sit down beside you (laughs) and share with the world um the experience that i have from my point of view right so you have your experience as the buyer yes and i have my experience (laughs) as the agent and it's very interesting that we're sitting down and we're going to be able to talk and share so i am definitely thankful for this experience I'm thankful for the invitation, and uh, you're going places. <laughs> thank you. Oh yes, well thank you. I am I am grateful for you as well. Um, I feel like I am kind of going back into a bit of not broken record, but mm-hmm. one of the things I've I've been focused on is getting to the point of accepting the process, and so right. being and I would say I continue to be grateful for the process, mm-hmm. um, but. Right now, I would say in this phase or this season of mm-hmm. the process that I am going through, I'm grateful that some of the things that I prayed about, thought about, was mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe mm-hmm. it's like they're starting, they're not necessary, they have not come to full fruition, mm-hmm. but I can, I can see them, like I can see where seeds are, you know, what they say, seeds are starting to bud, yeah, um, in that it's like, oh. It's happening. Right. It's, it's like, okay, I, I'm not crazy. Right. <laughs> that stuff, you know, I didn't just make it up. Um, it is attainable. And so right. it's 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 exciting, right. also a little overwhelming at yeah. times. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, it's about to happen, but oh okay, let me make sure I'm ready. Am I ready? So that was that's I'm saying that's where I am in this season. And you know, we're sitting in one of those things, and then in the, in the home I was able to purchase. So, right, exactly. like I said, you were, <laughs> yes. hey, you played a big part in that. And so, um, one of the things that I like, another thing that I like to do as a part of this podcast is I was sharing with you, um, and I definitely want us to talk about 
the experience. Um, mm -hmm. But before we jump to that, I did want to just hear, you know, for you to share mm -hmm. with those listening and or watching, mm -hmm. um, just kind of what led you to transition into real estate um, and doing it full time mm -hmm. and, and just making this your business. And like what, what drew you to real estate? Well, I would say what drew me to real estate is for uh, my passion for beautiful things. Okay. Right? <laughs> uh, beautiful homes, not so beautiful homes. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about the experience. So I come to real estate with over 15 years of healthcare experience okay. and operations management. So kind of like middle level management okay. in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved it. I love the teams that I work for. I love the teams that I manage, the people, the patients. I loved all of that, right? I consider myself um, a social butterfly. Right? I can definitely see that. I consider myself a social <laughs> butterfly. Um, and the passion that I have to help people um, really just drove me to real estate. Mm -hmm. So I struggled in the beginning becoming a real estate agent because I wasn't focused. Like I thought that I wanted to do it because I all I automatically thought I'm gonna make so much money <laughs> that I'm not gonna ever have to work again. But the reality of it is, when you find your passion, nothing that you do it feels like it doesn't feel like a job. Right. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that. So for me, um, this is, I feel like this is my calling. And I'm not turning away from all it. Right I'm now. going full <laughs> force. And I'm waiting for all of my wonderful clients to come knocking on the door. Well, there it comes. <laughs> all right. Well, that's, that's great. And so passion, I would say that's, that's a big thing in terms yeah. of even part of why I did this, you know, of wanting to be able to connect with people, help mm. people in a different way. And yeah. so I would say, what has been the biggest difference for you from, you know, having come from a, a long career within healthcare, like you said, middle management, mm -hmm. working for and with, you know, having people report to you, but also mm -hmm. reporting to someone to where now, mm -hmm. I know there's still some level of a reporting structure, but yeah. for the most part, the way I see it, yeah, you are... The one your show. Yes, you are <laughs> your own boss uh, yeah. and are making the decisions. Um, yeah. So what I was, what would you say has been the biggest difference or how, kind of? Uh, the, the biggest difference is schedule-wise, okay. right? When you work a traditional nine <laughs> to five, <laughs> you know that, okay, I need to be to work by nine o'clock and I might have a five minute right. rest period, right? <laughs> When you are an entrepreneur, you don't have that outline. You don't mm -hmm. have that. Uh, you have to stay on top of yourself. Right. Right. Definitely. And if you don't, that could mean a, a transaction. It could mean a lost client. It can mean so many different things. So one struggle for me has definitely been staying consistent, staying on top of myself, mm -hmm. because if I don't, I'm going to lose a client. I'm going to screw up a transaction. I'm going to, you know, so it's, you, I have to stay focused. As long as I'm staying focused on um, building my, my business, mm -hmm. then I'm good. When I'm managing or what I've managed for um, healthcare centers, they already had a structure. They already had a guideline. I right. was just there to reinforce it with other employees. Mm -hmm. right? I was there to uh, instruct, coach, assist my employees in getting the job done. In real estate, it's just me. Right. It's just me. <laughs> And I do, I want to give a shout out to my team, Remax Closers. <laughs> um, they are awesome. They, our team has over 50 years combined. Mm. We're a smaller boutique uh, agency right now, brokerage right now. Um, over 50 years of experience, right? So you'll hear me say this over and over again. Every transaction is different. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you take over 50 something odd years of experience 
there is no transaction that my team can't come, can't handle, can't um, compromise with, can't figure it out, right. right? So I'm thankful for my team. Okay. And yeah. Well, that's great. No, yeah, a team makes a difference. And in that part of, I am, you know, mm -hmm. in the, well, I, wouldn't, I can't even say I'm in the process of transitioning. It has happened right. in the sense of me. <laughs> Um, entering into full time entrepreneurship, okay, and that good. I would say that part, um, I was just kind of lastly going through like, okay, I've got to create a schedule for myself, okay. and this whole for me it's been the shifting, you know, transforming, shifting my mindset. Of, okay, okay, yes, I'm up, but no, there is no one, and I for the most part I've been fortunate in previous jobs I was able to kind of set my mm -hmm. schedule to not. The work schedule but in terms of things mm -hmm. due but there was still that you had this timeline a frame of, mm -hmm. like you said things were put in place so now mm -hmm. it's a matter of creating those things right implementing and right. enforcing those things for myself and to make it's sure, a little harder right? right and to make sure that okay i am doing the work mm -hmm. but also managing like you said the business side of it right. making sure that you know you're doing things to market so that you can right. get those clients right to to manage um so what would, I think you said the managing of the time. Right. Is there anything else that you would say that you have learned about yourself um, in, in, in this, yes. in, in this <laughs> endeavor? Yes, I definitely know that I take on one's emotions. Okay. Whatever it is that they're going through, right? Mm -hmm. I can, I take that on for myself. I try not to show it. However, um, real estate has taught me that I am more sensitive than I thought I was. Okay. Because I have to remain professional at all times. <laughs> okay? So it's not like I can go and bust someone out because nine times out of ten, I'm going to have to work with that other agent. I'm going to have to deal with that other brokerage. Mm -hmm. um, so I have learned calmness within myself right because mm -hmm. whatever i'm projecting i am pushing it off to my client gotcha. and real estate can be a very frustrating um time in someone's life and i am there to remove that filter it right and give them the best experience i possibly can give um and that's what I would say. I've learned calmness with myself. Okay. Um, more professionalism, more than when I was working for someone else, mm -hmm. right? Because I am the face of my business. Right. Although I am associated with Remax Closers, I am my own boss, yeah. right? My broker is there, and she does an amazing job of managing our transactions making sure that we're sick with compliance, making sure we follow the law, making sure that we are in pushing us to provide the best experience for our clients that we possibly can. And uh, I'm trying to, you know, get better on it. <laughs> well, hey, that's just all we can do is, you know, as they say, practice makes perfect. Yeah. Uh, perfect practice, all those different things. But I think it's, that's a great, I think that's one thing I was saying, just being able to be reflective as mm -hmm. you're growing and so yes. learning. And I was, before, I, I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by your nails. They look great. Sorry, no, no, they look great. It's like, oh, oh holiday, me, me, glam holiday could also, <laughs> yes. you know, on brand with the colors. <laughs> um, but no, I was laughing a little when you were saying in terms of you learn that you take on what your you know the situation because I, I can empathize very much. yes and, and i was laughing a little because <laughs> i witnessed that i've yes, experienced that yes, firsthand yes. um in uh in this and during my transaction yes. as you call it or during the process uh -huh. of um the process of me looking for a home yes, yes. Um, it was very fun i just want to say that <laughs> You were a really, really good buyer in the sense that you knew what you wanted, right? The area might have been a little tricky. The area might have been a little tricky, but you knew what you want, and I was able to pick up on that 
and this house actually that you closed on, yes. you didn't even see it first. Right. And that is what I think that sets me apart from a lot of other realtors, right? Mm -hmm. Because I do listen. I listen. I ask questions. I ask a lot of questions. She does. Just to she make does. sure because it's about you. It's all about you. And it should always, whenever you are buying and or selling or renting, mm -hmm. it is about that person, right? So I was very excited. The only thing that I thought about this house was like the smell probably. Oh, yeah. Because it was yeah. so bright. <laughs> uh, but I knew that you were probably going to like this house only because of something that you fell in love with oh, and yes. we actually wrote on the old right the old house <laughs> so i knew and you know i'm a big believer in what's for you is for you period right we saw what was for you but that one was not for you that is true that is this true. one was for you yes yes so is. i'm very um, thankful yeah. for that it was very it was that was a good one this it was, was a good one in the in high it was like during the time it uh -huh. felt like it was forever yeah but oh, when it I, it oh, just, it not so much but it was just the process of yeah. looking it felt like oh my gosh it's been yeah months and months it's taking yeah. forever but when I think back on it in hindsight it really was only two months right it really it, it was and you you were able to understand the real estate market a little better too the market, right? yeah, the market because where your money goes matters. Your location matters. Very your much. taxes matter. Your acreage <laughs> matters. Very much. Your square so. footage matters. Your community matters. Yes. And I right? would say that was one thing. Um, and as you mentioned, the market. Um, I touched on this before. If you are looking or know anyone who's looking, um or during this year the market has been crazy <laughs> just like crazy. Crazy. yeah and it's like thinking that it was going to taper but it seems to what you were sharing it's still crazy and ridiculous yeah, and just absolutely the, and i would say i know that added added a level of intensity i would say yeah um to the process also the fact that i was Living in North Carolina, <laughs> looking in, in Maryland, in Maryland. Um, and so I'll say you did a great job of. Um, I would tell her, "Hey, I'll be here these days." I was on it, and was we would it. have yeah. marathon, yeah. marathon, marathon days. Showing. I think yeah. the longest day we did like fifteen or yeah, 16, yeah, yeah. Like something like thirteen or fifteen houses in a day, which somehow we managed to keep them yeah. all straight. And yeah. I learned, I learned, and saw a lot more of Maryland. <laughs> I had even Prince George's County because I was initially set on I want to stay in this county in this right. county or this right. is the area and this is what I want. Those taxes. Yeah, the taxes I knew from being in Prince George's County that yes, the, ta the taxes were high, things were higher, mm -hmm. and I knew the areas that I were my preferential areas. Those HOA fees yes, also. The HOA fees were disgusting. Mm -hmm. Um. But one of the things, too, that I would say that I appreciated that I'm sure initially you were like, I need her to understand that what she's saying she wants and what she wants to pay are not matching right, up. Right. So but you still were below. You still were below I was, where you were trying to go to. Yeah. And if we were comparing this house to the old house, the amount of repair. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there was definitely a difference there, too. So it was, yeah, it was like when I would find we would find something that was under or closer to what I would say your budget, your budget was. was or was even was lower than the budget. There was always, oh, but you're going to need at least 50 grand worth right. of renovation <laughs> right away up front. Like not even an if or a maybe. It's a definite you will need yeah. to do X, Y, Z. Um, well, that was one of the things that I would say. I know that I can be stubborn. Really? And um, <laughs> really? I, yeah, I, know, I don't know. It doesn't always show. No, I wouldn't call you stubborn outside but in the sense of i appreciated where initially i was like why does she keep sending these other ones but when like you kept adding in some other houses right. that had it would be a little for? further or they'd be it would wouldn't look the way that i thought it oh, would okay. but it would be and then some of them would be under or a little over the, the price that mm -hmm. we talked about but the ones that were over had 
everything, everything that I said I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was just like, hmm, oh, okay. Right. All right, I'm getting the message. Right. Right. What I want in the location right. or not. And one of my my friends, um, you I think you met her. Yeah. She went and looked at some houses. Yeah. One of my that friends when cool. I was in North Carolina, because that was the other thing about the the market is and that also made it challenging, especially with me not physically being yeah. here. Was houses were getting listed on Tuesday and being under contract on Wednesday, sometimes yeah. the same day. And so there was a, a couple times with multiple offers right <laughs> that one house that uh chris what i went to yeah. that house had 30 offers on that house all over asking right all and, over asking and i was like mm, but this don't even seem worth what yeah. they asking yeah. and you stuck to your gun though that and was so the that was the thing like one of my um my line sister actually she had gone with you mm -hmm. and they video called me video chatted me to show me the house and and so it was like trying to it was Finding the house that had everything you wanted with or that I wanted within the budget that was still available right. and then putting in a competitive offer mm -hmm. because people were, what was, I think one of them, they had gone, like they had offered 20 over mm -hmm. and then we, oh yeah, it was in, I think it was in Capital Bowie. Heights. Was it Capital Heights? I think it was Bowie, it was a townhouse and then we oh, went yeah, and looked yeah. in, um, mm -hmm. What's this place far down out of uh, Brian's Road? Brian's Road saw a townhouse that was identical <laughs> for like fifty grand less. Yeah. So but the air location, location, location yes. matters, and Brian's Road is considered more of a rural area than mm -hmm. for the Bowie or Lago that we were in. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So, <laughs> so with a rural. lot of rural areas, you will definitely see that price um, difference. <laughs> And because it's in a different county, so different cities within the county, they have lower tax rates because of, one, it could potentially be rural area or, you know, the taxes just are not that high. So you see that in the reflection of the prices of the houses. Definitely, definitely. And that one was real rural. <laughs> it was and it was a lot. And then all I could think was everything and everyone I know, or at least the hour, hour and a half yeah. away without traffic. Yeah. Um, and I was so against Charles County and Waldorf and everything yeah. else, but yet you settled here in I am. <laughs> and um it was it was definitely uh, like oh god, what am I doing? Yeah. Waldorf, I don't I just this sounds far, far, far away. Um <laughs> Which it is still pretty yeah. far, but I I will say like you said it has. I would say if we're going like it has eighty five ninety percent. We're really more like actually I think it's like ninety ninety five percent of everything that was on my list. Yes, I would say. I would definitely say the only thing is the location, but we double checked that too. With yeah. so there was other uh, other variables. Your job at the time where you worship, you know, your activities, your friends in the area, all those things played and came into consideration with this house. What was unique about this house is that I worked closely with the agent before. Definitely. Um, so at the time that I was working with you, I was probably working with maybe three other clients at the time. Mm -hmm. And he actually listed a house around the corner and I lost that house. And my clients on that house put in a bid thirty thousand over, Ooh. and they still would oh. beat out. So I told him, "Look, whenever you have something, let me know." And he said, "You know what? Well, I do have something coming." And I actually showed this house to them too. They didn't like it. Well, thank you. And I knew it. And I was Thanks. like, "Okay, this is the only concern I had." I was just like, because the owner was a smoker, and I was just like, "I don't know if she's going to be able to get over." Although the house, you didn't have to put that much repair into it, um, you just don't know when your client isn't there with you. Videos, they show certain things. It's nothing like coming on the first time. I think the first time you saw this house, we actually get it inspected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you for trusting me with that. But uh, that was a yeah. long drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, but th and that was, I would say, even. Like you said, in, in, in learning, one thing you've learned about yourself in, mm -hmm. in transitioning your business, 
um, I would say the process. Yeah. And I'm, I, I imagine it's somewhat similar for anyone, especially if you're buying your first home. But one of the things that I would say that I learned, and I know that you were helpful, instrumental mm-hmm. in, and then learning, I learned things about myself. Yeah. And going through the process of just like you said, what do I want? And yeah. what's going to be the best thing for me? Mm-hmm. And sticking to that yeah. and not. Feeling not settling or not feeling pressured just because other people, you know, because mm-hmm. I think the first offer we put in. Oh, that was a nice house, too. Though. It was a nice house. In hindsight, I am very glad that I didn't get it. Oh, me too. After looking back, you know, going back yeah. to see it in different, that in different times. Those, that, that was one of those examples where um, if you would have got that house and you would have paid for that house, mm. it would have been out of desperation. And you were not desperate. Yeah. So that's why for your agent to be calm, cool, and collected at all times to deliver that blow that your offer wasn't accepted and be able to talk you through, okay, your offer wasn't accepted on this house, but let's keep looking because there are better things out there, right? Mm-hmm. Just there imagine was, that house. Yeah, because they even wanted... The second offer that we wrote was another was the other townhouse, you remember? Yeah, and that was when I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I don't. And you yeah. hadn't told you yet. Well, but I was okay. like, I am not... Thanks for the heads up. No, because it was what it was... It was the, I think that was the third yeah. offer, oh, and that really? was the one that... Oh, that was... Yeah, they, it was, was I didn't get outbid, but the person they went with was willing to forego the inspection. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I was And like, you can't do that. You I, Well, you could, but I wouldn't have buy yeah, it. I, yeah, that. I wasn't doing that, and it was just like, right. oh, really? Okay, I need a break. Yeah. I'm taking at least a week or two off of this, because yeah. I think... Yeah, because I had come up, I think, for like a day or two mm-hmm. just to um to look. And I remember telling my mom, like, I'm done. I need a break. Right. And I want to say that was like a Thursday or Friday. Right. And then you called me like that Saturday. Was like, I found you something. I had another thing in my head. I'm like, no, I'm not. Because you're like, well, when can you get I can't come anytime soon. It's <laughs> um, okay. I got the video. <laughs> right. And, it, but, and even in that, it was like, okay, I am trying. And I was like, okay, God. But it was like. Well, you were like, no, I'll, it's not listed yet. It's coming soon, and I'll be able to go see it. And I'm like, okay, well, then I, all of my right. all, all of your my excuses, and excuses right. are I'll being sure. muted. And then it was when you sent the video, I was like, oh, oh, this is this looks familiar. Uh, this right, is a, right. oh, okay, this could work. Right. All right. And then I was like, oh, okay, but. I would say that whole, and then it was from, with that video, I think you sent the video on a Sunday. Uh-huh. We had and an then the, the, the following <laughs> Sunday. It was literally, like, yeah. it, and that's why I say in hindsight, I realized from the time that, like, from me getting my approval letter, mm-hmm. I think we went and looked at a couple houses yeah. before. Yeah. Um, But it's, like, realistically, the time frame mm-hmm. from getting the approval the pre-approval to mm-hmm. getting to closing mm-hmm. was two and a half months yeah but that two and a half months was a lot felt like forever yes okay. because, not necessarily forever but it was a lot and like i said i know i made it worse because i was going mm-hmm. i was still working which i am grateful for the way that my previous job was set up right because i did have a lot of flexibility but mm-hmm. um the driving back and forth yeah from North Carolina to Maryland, then looking at the house. One time you were in Delaware, and then you were coming back there. Oh yeah, yeah I I don't remember. I'm sure mm-hmm. I don't remember. It was a lot of different places, and then just keeping up with life and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of the pre the pre approval, um, and I touched on this before when I talked about how when we initially met, yeah, it was because I was looking for somewhere to rent, right. And you're like, well, why? Right. <laughs> why weren't you trying to buy? And how you introduced, I guess, could you touch a little bit on just how big of a role that plays or how important mm-hmm. it is in terms of the financing piece, yeah. in terms of the timing yeah. of that when you are looking? Yeah. So I would definitely say that the number one thing is that the more you know, the further you go. Right? Okay. And I say that because when we met, you were looking into renting only. Mm -hmm. And then I started asking you additional questions. And then I said to myself, well, look, I would not be doing you justice (laughs) if I didn't bring up the fact or or tell you, look, do you know what you could be saving 
when you buy versus when you're mm-hmm. renting, right? And a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> and it's okay, though. Right. Because if they come, well, you don't because your parents own property, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it's not even a fact of your parents owning. It's a journey that you're on. Right. Right? And so if you don't understand it, or if you don't understand the importance of it, then I feel like it is a part of my duty to let you know the pros and the cons of both. Right. Some people, they need to continue to rent mm-hmm. for a couple of years before they can actually buy comfortably. Right. Because they don't have they don't have the discipline that it takes. They may make a lot of money, mm-hmm. but have piss poor saving habits. They um are they're in debt. There are a lot of people that are in debt, right? And they don't know how to get out of it, and they don't ask questions either. Right. So one thing about you is that. I brought it up. You mentioned that you had thought about it. And what a lot of realtors will do is they will put you in touch with a trusted lender that will tell you exactly what you need to do. Right? And that is exactly what happens. So when the lender talks to you Mm -hmm. and tells you exactly what you need to do and you don't follow it, you're not my ideal client. Okay, I understand. Right? Yeah, because that's more work and headache for you. Right. And so in order for me to stay even keel or keel, whatever, how that goes, but to stay grounded, I focus my energy on those clients that I know, like, and I trust. So the same way that I want you to trust me with your real estate transaction, I need to trust you with your real estate transaction. I need to know that if you're not ready to buy today and I put you in touch with someone that tells you that you can potentially buy within the next six months to a year, that you're going to follow what they say so that I can be the best agent possible for Mm -hmm. you. There's nothing worse than representing a buyer, right? And they're not performing. I get them all the way to the closing line. And And they they, went and bought something. they, They... Got a new car. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do yes. that? Right? Because they don't know. So the first thing is to that I would recommend people, if you are interested in buying a home, talk to a lender. Definitely. The lender will tell you where you are, where you need to be, and how to get there. Whether that's paying down debt, Mm-hmm. Whether that's um, settling debt, whether that's increasing your savings, whether that is whatever the case may be, you need I'm to go gonna, make some more money, right? Because exactly. I heard that, that was one of the things, right? So you need to find a way to make these student loans disappear, right? Right. But the lender is there only as guidance, right? Right. So when somebody tells you in writing what you need to do and you don't do it, then it's on you at that point, right? No, definitely. And I, I wholeheartedly agree. And I knew some of that from previous experience. Um, and I shared that with you. And then when you told me, I was like, look now, I would love to. Right. But here's my situation. Right. Me and all this lovely student loan debt. Right. I have been down this road before. And then when you, you know, introduced me mm-hmm. um, to the lender, that was <laughs> before he got very far. And like, look, I understand what you're saying mm-hmm. that you want to do, but this is what I need to know. And this is what I need from you right. because I've been burned, screwed over right. before. Right. And that was one of the things that I did appreciate about you and him mm-hmm. and the dynamic that you all had and in boundaries, um, right. you know, people understanding what their role and what their lane is. Yeah. And that is one thing that I can say about with you and, yeah. and, and Mike uh-huh. um, throughout the process was. Yeah. When I needed information from you, I was able to get it. When I needed information from him, I was able to get it. And it was never, uh, I got I never felt like I had to chase anybody down right, good, good. to find out what I needed, especially right. on the lending side because he was very efficient. He's very efficient. And I have a, I had a baseline understanding of everything just based mm-hmm. on 
my work with foreclosure mm -hmm. and my dad being a realtor, but it's mm -hmm. still very different. <laughs> It's one thing to know about it in theory. Mm -hmm. It's different when your name is the yeah, one on the yeah, documents. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, making sure, okay, what about this? What's this happening? And then especially when we finally got to the closing. Right. We got close to closing date and all of the fun started. started. Yeah. Um, and trying to sort through that. Mm -hmm. And I would say that is another time that your ability to take on or sense what I was feeling or going through, mm -hmm. but remaining professional and remaining and maintaining your composure to <laughs> present and communicate with those right. because um my closing day was very emotional. Was I would say the week leading up to it was, was emotional. We kind of knew that we were gonna run into some of the issues. Yes, some of them but but not the way that they yeah they just happen right so the one thing I can say about that is um, people should be aware of when they're buying and the type of market that they're buying in mm -hmm. when you bought this home and currently um, is a seller market right so that means that there are not a lot of houses for sale that people want to get so most sellers are getting multiple offers on their home. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, <laughs> they pretty much um, control everything. Yes. Right? And do whatever they want to or do. They, or they don't. Because as a buyer, one, once you go under contract, once your offer is accepted and you're ratified, mm -hmm. everything is pretty much on you. Right? Yeah. The no. seller has to sign the paperwork <laughs> saying that they transfer the deed from their name to your name, right? Mm -hmm. And or if there's a situation where an inspection is in place, things are supposed to be repaired, done, how they leave the property, that's on the seller. But if you, as the buyer, have an issue with right before closing or the day of closing, mm -hmm. things aren't the way that they're supposed to be handled. Your only options are to pull away from the, the deal, right? In which you've already paid for the appraisal, you've already paid for the home inspection, and or if you had other inspections added to that, right? Not to mention the earnest money. Right, your earnest money deposit is then on the table to why you're backing away from the, the, the deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, and they could fight that. They could also fight your earnest money deposit, right? Definitely. So, the buyers are being left stranded sometimes at the table with items still being left in the property, mm -hmm. moving out at the last minute, and they're putting holes in the walls or doors, and you need <laughs> to replace whole new doors because, you know... The way that they were moving out was reckless, right? So, and, and then your your only option at that point is to take what they're giving you, or walk away after thirty some odd days. You're already planning to move in. You're already doing X, Y, and Z. the The final closing disclosures are made, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything yes. is ready to just be signed. Mm -hmm. And the seller fails to do anything. Move out in a timely fashion. Still have people here moving plants away. Garbage. <laughs> I was going to say, right? I can run down the list. But yes, literally so hours. Before. You're not the only one. You're not in this market that is considered a seller's market. Mm -hmm. The sellers are literally doing the bare minimum. The bare, bare minimum, minimum, and then they're under here. Right. A lot of them are. And that is just the reality of it. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. How is that policed? Well, um, one, we, we being real estate agents, we work with each other, mm -hmm. right? And in the situation for this particular home, the agent was here with me yes. during... The time where that particular client wasn't able to perform and, and he was really, I think he was just sincerely sorry for, you know, 
um, the lack of um, respect that he assigned to children at that time. Um, and yeah, that was a that was a doozy. That was a mm-hmm. doozy. Yeah, that's a word for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yes, it was a doozy, and it was a very long day. Um, and I know for me, it was extra because my cousin had passed away, and I think I oh. ended up missing. You the did. funeral I was supposed you to go did. to because it was supposed to be that I think we were supposed to close that Friday, right? Whatever it was, closing date had been set for thirty days, and right. then it got moved. Yeah. Um. And so it was just a lot of back and forth, a lot of unknowns. There was issues with the deed that came up. Yes. Yeah. Um. That's but another thing. Yeah. As I am focusing on the positive, mm-hmm. good is at the end of the day, despite all of that, I was able to get to the closing table and close. Mm-hmm. And we learned some new, even that was, right. <laughs> that was an experience. Um, you know, the guy who did my closing spent half the time talking about attorneys and what all that they do. Right. And then halfway through, it was like, oh, what do you do? <laughs> I'll buy the attorney. Right? Yeah, oh, by the way. Um, but it was, it was a, I would say, like I said, all in all, it was a great learning experience for me like i said in terms of just the real estate yeah um world yeah. about myself um mm-hmm. and in most situations and you know like and in, in people that i know of that have bought houses or what you hear in most cases once you close you know say for a little follow-up here and there you part ways with your realtor right. no, and, me. I'm here and, to that is, and you know that's kind of like okay you did what you need to do that's done and Bye. that was kind of what i i can't even say that's what i expected with you because oh, no. before we even right. really Close got started story. in looking uh-huh. she was asking me what i wanted to do for my house right. what was i thinking you were like about? slow down you know, like, wait a minute let me let me get approved right. let me find something right um so it was like okay she asked about these things and true to your word uh uh-huh. we like said we closed and then it was well before i even get there she mentioned how some sellers you know are reckless uh-huh. or less than um uh-huh. uh less than they're disrespectful whatever you want to say i'll say reckless right. and careless in the sense of how they turn the house over yeah so there was definitely some damage done mm-hmm. So, out of the sheer goodness of her heart, she took it upon herself to help me, not even really help me because it was done for me, um, making sure that all of the items that were remained, that had been left in the house were removed, that the damage that had been done, um, things were repaired and or replaced, and house was as much like new as, you know, as and it was left in the condition it should have been mm-hmm. by the time I got the keys. And this literally was happening same while, day. like same day. Like we were here like one, two that afternoon, left to go to closing. And by the time I got back that night with the key to pick up the actual keys, it was it was like, oh, it's it's done. Um, and so that was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I I was all over in terms of emotions, but yeah. it was just like, okay, this is surreal. This is happening. But okay, she did that. And, and you know, got it, you know, gets to the point of in the house. She's mm-hmm. still following up, checking up. Do you need this? Do you need that? Mm-hmm. And then fast forward. I'll let you, one of the things that I was like, I said, I appreciate with this, you yeah. and this whole experience. But one of the things that I would say in terms of, you know, going back to what makes you and your service unique mm-hmm. is not only did she do all of those things, that she made sure that despite me trying to be like, eh, about it, I had a housewarming, and she hosted the housewarming. Okay. So, it was just like, oh, and I remember even afterwards, like, some of my friends were like, so, all realtors do this? Oh, I was like, I don't know. Yet, I don't think right, so. Right. Like, this is something that she did. So, I guess if you would just, you know, share a little bit about your reason mm-hmm. for doing that or... Um, just, yeah, just your reason so, for doing that. So I'm very passionate about what I do. Mm-hmm. And I always say, and I think one of my um, uh, my team's motto um, is to enhance the customer's experience, right? Mm-hmm. Enhance my client's experience, right? Mm-hmm. And with that, um, 
you know, there's always celebration when you're having a baby, when you're getting married. Um, but in my opinion, buying a house, <laughs> you're getting married. <laughs> this is your baby, right? Right? Because yeah. you're going to be paying for it in a little while, right? Uh -huh. So I think that it needs more recognition and more celebration. We need to see more housewarmings for people. Um, because like you said, when we first met, it was almost a year. Well, the half of a year when you actually started to buy. Yeah. I just thought about it, it I think in November, it, I think. It was it was almost yeah. a year to the date when I had right. the house when exactly. we met. Yes. Yeah, I didn't even think about so, that. So so those are huge milestones that um if someone wants me to represent them, just know that um I'm going to go above and beyond for you, not while we're in a transaction, but you know, after the fact, I want to celebrate with you. I want to celebrate with you, with your family, with your friends, um, because that's important. Memories like that, you will always remember my nervousness, my <laughs> everything, right? I don't feel like I performed at my um, best when it came to a housewoman because that's not my niche, right? Mm -hmm. But I learned so many things that doing the next one and the next one and the next one that I'm only going to get that much better, mm -hmm. right? So for every buyer that I represent, I do offer that service to hosting their house Um, I think that it's needed. Um, every realtor doesn't offer that, but I do. So, and she does. <laughs> um, and food was great. Everything was good, great. Good. Um, and like I said, that was one thing that I have historically not done the greatest in terms of celebrating myself yes, or allowing or to. doing well to allowing others to celebrate yes, me and so yes. even even that day it was no, like zero. it was i was like and even because you, you kept saying do a registry and i'm like i'm not having no baby i'm not no, like no do a registry but anything. it was i'm glad that i did it mm -hmm. was definitely even in that part it was like, okay this is a big thing yeah. let me acknowledge it you know like kind of pause and actually enjoy the moment like mm -hmm. you were saying earlier because that is an area that i have mm -hmm. struggled with of uh, being so focused on the net what's next and how mm -hmm. am i going to get here in the next thing and being focused on the destination or the right. next destination and instead of enjoying the join the moment so how did you feel when you were opening your gifts it felt after weird. the registry <laughs> like two people are oh you did your registry, people ordered you things, people sent you things. Did that feel it, great? No, it did. It, yes. it was. It you was had like, decorations, balloons, it was like, oh everything. Because I have, you know, I have friends who have babies and, and got married. And, and just this year, you know, my sister. So it's like I'm used to being the one planning and yep. being behind the scenes. Yep. So being the one that is being um, celebrated, celebrated, it was That's definitely initially i was still in like host mode like trying to help right, okay what, right. and then it's like no. well your mom let me get a huge shout out to your mom <laughs> um because she's always come through and collecting she was even here one time when we were uh yes, the houses, yes, right yes. um shout out to her and your dad for helping me through that because i'm not um i wouldn't say that i'm like the best host of anything i have the ideas and um, everything in my head but sometimes when it comes to hosting mm -hmm. that's not my forte but your mom definitely stepped up and helped me out with the game I think everyone enjoyed those oh yes they got yeah. games for days they, yeah. that is you ever in the, at any kind of Alexander function there will <laughs> right, be games right. a good chunk of them are going to be ones that they probably made up themselves <laughs> But it works. Like there's no card, no actual physical right. items. But but yeah, it's right. usually a good time. But like I said, that was it was an awkward moment. But mm -hmm. it was also like, it was awkward initially. But it did feel good to just good. be like, oh wow, this it this happened and right. it's happening. And like okay, this is good. And not being so quick to be okay on to the next thing. Yeah. Just actually yeah. enjoying right. the yeah. moment. Enjoying the moment. And a moment that was very well deserved because you did a lot of work to get to where you are, right? You did a lot of work. I might have been there to help you throughout the transaction, <laughs> but most of the hard work was all you. Dedication, discipline, 
understanding, a bunch of questions. <laughs> that was all you. And that is what's needed when you take a major step like purchasing your first home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that must have been a huge uh, milestone for you. Yes, yes, yes. And as I say, this milestone, that was one. And then now the whole, the joy yes, of ownership yes. and all the fun that comes yes. with it. But I am yes. still, it, even some days I literally just have like, even when things are kind of, it feels like, oh, it's here's something else or something else. It's just, I still have moments where I just kind of like pause like, oh, it's real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's coming to take oh, this. Right, right. Um, I've, I've paid my mortgage, so they're not coming to take it. No. Um, <laughs> right, you better. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I paid it. Um, but it is, like I said, it has been that. But I don't, I said it before, and I guess I just want to make sure to say that I do thank you and I appreciate You're you um, and the, not just the service, but you being you and the way that you okay. do the service. Um, right. But before I guess before we go, I do want to just anything we touched on a little bit in terms of things for people to be mindful of yeah. um, the kind of clients that you prefer that you work right. with. Um, but is there anything else that you would I guess any advice or just anything for people to consider um, when they're getting ready to purchase or sell? Mm -hmm. um, and then you know how people can mm -hmm. find you and get in touch with you. Okay. So one, people can find me on Instagram at Takia. T A K E Y A dot white. I'm also on Facebook at Takia White. Um, you could call me 240-687-8850. Shoot me an email, my first name, last name at remax.net. Um, or just to follow Latavia and she will get you in touch with me. Will do. Um, as far as clientele, so I do work with everyone. I work with people that are looking for rentals. I work with buyers. I work with sellers. I work with investors. And I also deal with um, people that are looking to lease commercial properties. Um, so I can pretty much handle anything. I'm only licensed in Maryland now. I will be working on my DC and around Virginia licensure, um, hopefully in 2022. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Now. Um, and I would say that you have to be open to talk to someone where you are. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you want to do, if you want to potentially own a home, you have to talk to a lender because a lender is the only one or close to the only one that will be able to tell you where you are and where you need to be in order to purchase a home. The more you know, the further you go. And it only takes one conversation with a lender to find out. Um, what is needed for you to become a homeowner. Some people, they will find out they're ready right now, mm -hmm. right? Some people, they may need to work on their credit score. They may need to work on their debt to income ratio. They may need to work on their savings, mm -hmm. right? Um, another thing, in a seller's market, those days of getting a bunch of help from the seller, um, they they're they're oh. still there's still sellers out there willing to do that. But if they are faced with thirty offers on a property and one person is asking for closing help and the other person isn't, whatever they can do to save money, they will do. Right. So you wanna be prepared. You want to be um ready to purchase a home you want to be ready for your agent to write an aggressive offer to ensure that you get the home mm -hmm. right so that takes a little work on the buyer's part now for sellers i would say it's very important that you get your house in shape for someone to buy your house right please do so and i say that because the listings that i've had this year they have been awesome, mm -hmm. right? I stand by the product <laughs> that I am selling, mm -hmm. right? So those people that have purchased a home that I represent as a seller, they can tell you that there were no issues with the house being clean, 
um, repairs not being made, waiting to the last minute, res- the responsiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, so the sellers, if you're interested in selling your home, if you have questions, you can contact me. I will do a comparative market analysis for you to tell you what your home could potentially be worth or what it could potentially sell for in your neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and some sellers, they may not know of repairs. They may not know of things that are going on with their home, but you have to tell your agent. You have to talk to your agent right? so that you can have the best um, possible strategy to sell your home. It's still a seller's market now, mm-hmm. um, and... It doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. So not at all. Prices are still going up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Keep keep raising my prices. <laughs> right. Prices are still going up. And I think that, you know, if people would let their guard down a little bit and talk to someone within the real estate world, preferably me, um, they will know that it's not as hard as it it um sounds to everyone mm-hmm. and that there's work that may have to be done or you could potentially be ready now so. right no yeah thank you that's okay. that's big because i know one of the things for me and some of my friends this year it's like yes let's this, this year be the year that you know we buy houses and, right. and things but that was the conversation kind of some of the things that i've learned mm-hmm. um before meeting you and during you know mm-hmm. after meeting you and during the process and even in my conversations with mm-hmm. mike um, and one of the things I remember telling some of my friends was like, at least have the conversation. Yeah. It doesn't hurt. Like most of them, they're not charging you to talk to you. Right. They're not necessarily, you don't have to do a credit pool. Like you don't have to do, um, have your credit pulled to have the conversation. Right. There's a lot of, um, first time home buyer or just home buyer programs yeah. that the state has that, yeah. um, are free to do. Um, mm-hmm. and then there are different incentives, especially, and I Your down payment assistance. Down payment assistance. That I just, I didn't qualify. Right. For the you made too much money. This but time. there are programs for right. those that don't make as much money. Right. And, for and they're not taking and advantage of it. That part. And that was, um, I would say there's, there's a lot of things in another program. Um, uh, one of my friends is going through is NACA. And oh, yeah. I never remember what NACA stands for. But that's another program that there are some income limits, but it also, they have options for -hmm. people regardless of income, but that's one that I had looked into initially because one of their, the things that they focus on are for people who do not, don't traditionally qualify for mortgages, especially people with a high student loan debt. Yeah. And that, I fall into that category, but, um. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for for, having me. for being here. I know we I mentioned this a while mm-hmm. ago, but I'm happy yeah. that we were able to make it happen. And absolutely, be sure that if you are looking now or thinking about it, know anyone who is looking to purchase, sell, um, lease, office space, whatever it may yep. be, um, that you look her up. I 100% recommend her. Thank you. Um, and uh, I would say this. <laughs> me was another reminder that has come up more um a few times as we've been talking but just to enjoy the moment Mm -hmm. and focus on being present in the moment and um remember that regardless of what it looks like or feels like that it's about the journey Mm -hmm. and the process not the destination so take it one day at a time and enjoy the moment yeah thank you all so much for listening um if you have not already if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, um, wherever you're listening, be sure to follow, comment. Would love to hear your thoughts. What are some things that you are going through? Some things where you are focusing on the moment. Um, love to hear from you.